Hello, everybody, and welcome back to some points racing. We are at race number 13, which means after this race, we are halfway through the regular season before the chase for the championship. Hi, I'm Levi McIntyre, a.k.a. Thrashmaniac99, the voice of NASCAR Walmart Cup Series, here to welcome you to the Coca-Cola 600 at Charlotte Motor Speedway, the longest race of the season 60 laps at Charlotte Motor Speedway for the running of this race, and this race will be really intense as we just got through All-Star Race Weekend where Seth Cole, in a photo finish of three one thousandths of a second, pulled it out and won the All-Star Race. But can Seth Cole do what Michael Norman did last season and not only win the All-Star Race, but win the 600 as well. We'll find out here in just a moment. But starting up here, or no, we're not doing, I completely forgot. Um, here is a look at your starting lineup for this race. But before I show you the starting grid, to talk about the point situation coming into this race, Gabe Williams, who's a rookie, is leading the points by only 16 points over Eric Burton. And 21 points over Austin Talley and Mason Bromer. So it's 21 points separating the top four. And the current top ten at the moment is Gabe Williams, Eric Burden, Austin Talley, Mason Bromer, Rue McIntyre, Betty Johnson, Henrietta Fitzwater, Joshua Collar, David Rivera, and Trent Dunham. Those would be the ten drivers that would be in the chase via being in the top ten in points. And then the two wild card spots would go to Austin Weiner and Chris Washer for being the highest cars in the point standings that have a win. But now here's a look at your starting lineup for tonight's race. your starting lineup Alex Pedro Annie Thomas the front row two rookies and now boogity 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 let's go racing boys and girls Alex Pedro pulls out to a pretty good lead over Annie Thomas and that leaves some room for rookie Ryan Anderson jr. in that 51 car to try to get a run on Annie Thomas for the second spot Meanwhile, they're getting pretty racy back here, and now it's going to be three wide for the lead between Ryan Anderson Jr., Annie Thomas, and Alex Pedro, but Annie Thomas leads the first lap here. But now Ryan Anderson Jr. to the bottom to try to get the lead for himself. But now here comes Matt McIntyre. Now this track is... Oh, and we got a wreck! There goes Preston Plord. Oh, and we have a car up in the air, and this is a big, big wreck. There is uh, Gabe Williams, the points leader, involved in the new GoDaddy car. Eric Burton was involved. There was Tommy Mooney back here. 
There were quite a bunch of cars involved in this wreck. Let's see uh, if anybody else had any damage. Looks like these guys made it through clean, but m I know uh, Williams, or Gabe Williams, and Eric Burton were involved. I'm trying to look and see if there were any damaged cars. Zachary Fitzwater looks like he got a piece of it. And now these cars are slowing down. So that way they can get in the pit road to see our first round of pit stops on lap three coming to lap four. After we went the first lap green on lap two, we get our first caution, and it was a pretty big wreck. I saw Ken Thero get airborne, and it looks like Matt McIntyre is going with fuel only. I guess that's what these cars are doing, just to give them some little bit more fuel. So they can, if case if there's a long green flag run, they can keep it going. I see Sonny Hammond was involved in that wreck. He's on pit road. He was down there before anybody else, but Matt McIntyre is going to come out as your leader. Second, Ryan Anderson Jr. Third, Betty Johnson. Fourth, Annie Thomas. Fifth, David Rivera. So that is a look at how your top five is going to be. Let's take a look at the replay to see what brought the caution out for this first time tonight here at Charlotte. Well, here's a look at it. These guys were getting very, very testy back here, and Ken Thera went up against the wall, and they are four wide. And right there, Ken Thera comes down into Kyle Matthews, Sam Young, and I believe that was Cody Lamas. And then cars just start piling in, and wow, Ken Thera was up on his side. He actually went on both sides of his car, but I don't think he went upside down. And then cars just kind of piled in. I see Tommy Mooney was involved. Alex Hawkins got a piece of it. There were quite a bunch of cars involved and such. Let's go up to the 9 of uh, Ken Thero as he was the starter of the wreck. There you see he's running three wide with Collard and Jackson, and he goes up and gets the wall, and then they make it four wide underneath him, and then actually it looked like Kyle Matthews kind of got into him, and that's what happened. And then cars just get in here, and then look at Kid Thera up on his right side on top of Barney Taylor and was on his driver's side but went back on his wheels. So he didn't turn over at all. He just went for a pretty wild ride, and there was Sonny Hammond in there. Eric Burton. Jessica Sheldon didn't get into it. She was just held up. Same for Theo Stegall. And then the rest of the cars managed to drive away from this accident scene. Like, there you see Preston Plord still continuing even after he got spun. But that is a look at uh, what brought the caution out. Let's take you back to the restart, shall we? Well, after that first wreck, we only have two cars over the wall and out of the race, and they are Sonny Hammond and Ken Thero. But Matt McIntyre is going to restart as your leader. Second is rookie Ryan Anderson Jr. Third is Betty Johnson. Fourth, Annie Thomas. Fifth, David Rivera. 6th Hunter Bell, 7th Rue McIntyre, 8th Austin Weiner, 9th Parker Wright, 10th is Trent Dunham. Then we got for the rest of the field Justin Talampas, Joshua Collard, Alex Pedro, Henrietta Fitzwater, Charles Jackson, uh, Dylan Thero, Chase Oliver, Brody Talley, Cody Lamas, and Austin Talley, the top 20. Then it's Seth Cole. Danny Wells, Alex Hawkins, Chris Washer, P.J. Williams, Zachary Fitzwater, Ian Dutta, Barney Taylor, Mason Bromer, and Jessica Sheldon, the top 30. Then the rest of the cars in the top 40 are Dylan Young, Gabe Williams, Sam Young, Jekko Knight, Eric Burden, Theo Stegall, uh, Tommy Mooney, Preston Plord, um, Michael Norman, and Kyle Matthews. That is your field. We are getting ready to restart with 54 laps to go, so we are g still have a long way to go here in this Coca-Cola 600. But here we go, green flag is back out. Matt McIntyre didn't get that great of a jump, 
but he managed to, but he's going to manage to stay up ahead for now, because now here comes Betty Johnson underneath of Ryan Anderson Jr. for the second spot. And now we got Annie Thomas and David Rivera, Hunter Bell, among others, coming into the fray. Now we got a battle between teammates Rivera and Johnson for the second position. But Matt McIntyre still leads for now. And now here comes David Rivera. He's going to try to stick it underneath Matt McIntyre. Oh, man, are they going to go four wide? Okay, I thought they were going to go four wide. Oh, they're four wide back there. Though they settled out to uh, double wide, although Ryan Anderson Jr. lost a lot of positions back there after he got the wall. Trying to look around the back to make sure nobody got wrecked. So far we're good, and David Rivera is your leader, but now Matt McIntyre is coming back. And now look who else is up here. We got Rue McIntyre up here along with Austin Weiner. This field can get shuffled around really, really fast, depending on how the racing situations are. And uh, Matt McIntyre got the lead right there. And we are a lap away from 50 to go, and the caution flag is out. What for? Oh, we got a wreck up ahead. Oh, a big wreck. We got Seth Cole, Michael Norman, Preston Plord, Alex Hawkins, Zachary Fitzwater, Sam Young, Dylan Young, Ian Dutta was involved, Kyle Matthews, Gabe Williams, Barney Taylor, Theo Segal, Jekko Knight, Tommy Mooney was in there. I see a little buckle, a tiny buckle on Chris Washer's hood. Jessica Sheldon, I think, got through. There we have another big wreck taking place. And the leader is David Rivera. And we are 50 to go. Let's now take a look at a replay to see what brought the caution out for the second time tonight here at Charlotte. Here's a look at it. Looks like Danny Wells comes up a little bit in the Alex Hawkins. And that's what gets Alex Hawkins to spin out through the grass. And then he's going to come back up the track right there in the Zachary Fitzwater. And then old Fitzwater actually went upside down. And he was on top of the wall. So he took a barrel roll. And then everybody just started to pile in. Like you see Seth Cole. Did Mason Bromer get through? There's the 11. Does he get through without damage? Or did he actually get involved? He got a little shove from Seth Cole and rubbed against the wall, but other than that, he got through that wreck. Great job for that 11 car, who's running, I believe, third in the point standings. Or no, fourth in the points. And then there you just see everybody just started to pile into this mess. And uh, let's go back to how this started. Trying to get back to the 47. Yeah, the 47 was running next to Austin Talley. And then Danny Wells' car pushes up the track. And he's going to turn the 47 down through the grass. And then he's going to come back up right in front of Zachary Fitzwater. And Chris Washer gives him a little hit and gets him upside down. And then everybody just started to pile in behind them. There you see Seth Cole, Gabe Williams, Sam Young. Dylan Young, Michael Norman got shoved in there by Barney Taylor. And then Preston Plord, Eric Burton get involved. So this was a much bigger wreck than what we had the first time around. But that wreck probably could have been avoided if the 31 didn't push up the racetrack. But then again, whenever you're running your line, sometimes the car will push up. But probably could have been avoided, but you never know. But that was a look at what brought the caution out. Is look at this dead heat to the line to get the lead. Wow, if the race would have been over, we would have had another photo finish, just like at the All-Star race. But David Rivera was the leader at the time when the caution came out. Let's take you to the restart to see if he is still the leader. Well, it looks like we're going to have another case of a few cars on the tail end of the lead lap running up at the front but Matt McIntyre leads but let's see the list of drivers out of the race 
They are Ian Dutta, Barney Taylor, Alex Hawkins, Zachary Fitzwater, Kyle Matthews, Michael Norman, and Preston Plord. Those are the cars out of the race, but... Or actually, Ian Dutta is a lap down. He's still continuing. Matt McIntyre is the leader. David Rivera, second. Third, Rue McIntyre. Fourth, Hunter Bell. Fifth is Austin Weiner. Sixth is Parker Wright. Seventh, Annie Thomas. Eighth is Joshua Collard. Ninth is Betty Johnson. Tenth is Trent Dunham. Then the rest of the field is Henrietta Fitzwater, Chase Oliver, Justin Talampas, Austin Talley, Ryan Anderson Jr., Brody Talley, Charles Jackson, Cody Lamas, Danny Wells, and Jessica Shelton, the top 20. And the rest of the lead lap cars are Dylan Thero, Mason Bromer, Alex Pedro, P.J. Williams, Tommy Mooney, Gabe Williams, Chris Washer, Seth Cole, and Theo Stagall. And then we got Dylan Young, Ian Dutta, who's a lap down in 34th, but then 31st, Eric Burden, then Sam Young, and the last car on the lead lap is Jekko Knight. But Matt McIntyre is the leader, but he's going to have heavy traffic in front of him. Who knows what's going to happen with this. This could be pretty bad, but let's see. Green flag is back out. And these cars are trying to find a way to get around these slower cars. <clears throat> oh man, this is not going to be good. This is not going to end very well what at all. They are three wide for the lead and they've got so many lap cars and up in front. I believe Matt McIntyre still has the lead from this moment. And then second is Rivera, I believe. Oh man, this is I am I am starting to shake a little bit like this is not going to be a good story. But Matt McIntyre still leads. We got to keep our eyes out back here on these slower cars. Something's got to give with these cars. Although I think Jekko Knight, I think he is up to speed. He's just a Lap machine, I don't know. He might be or he might not be up to speed, but either way, he's holding up two Penske cars. Oh, man, they are four wide. Oh, five wide? Are you kidding me? And there they go. There they wreck. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. Who's that upside down? Oh, that's Austin Weiner who went upside down a couple times. I knew something like that was going to happen. And then Ian Dutta gets involved, and Tommy Mooney involved. I think Austin Weiner's actually going to continue. After he flipped it, I don't see any terrible damage on the front of that car. He's going to be able to keep going. Unbelievable. Seth Cole involved, Danny Wells, and he's smoking. Let's try to find anybody else. There's Alex Pedro, who's the pole sitter. Tommy Mooney was in there. Oh, Austin Weiner got into something. Somebody got into him. And now he's damaged and smoking. Here, I thought he was going to be able to continue. And then somebody gets into him, puts him into the wall, and now he's done for. There is Sam Young up there. Ryan Anderson Jr., I think, got through. Jekko Knight, I know, was involved along with Ian Dutta. Gabe Williams, I think, got a piece of it. Hunter Bell, I know for sure, got involved. <clears throat> Man, this was a pretty wa big wad up mess. And now we're seeing the pit stops take place. I think Collard is going to come out first. I think he went with either fuel only or two tires and fuel because... I saw some cars behind him getting four tires. <clears throat> but now Joshua Collard is going to be your leader. Second is going to be Matt McIntyre. Third, David Rivera. Fourth, we'll see who's going to come out fourth. It looks like Betty Johnson and Trent Dunham will be the top five on this next restart. But let's take a look at a replay to see what brought the caution out for the third time tonight here at Charlotte. Well, here they were going four wide, nearly five wide, to try to get around the lap car of Jekko Knight. And then contact takes place between the two Penske cars and PJ Williams, and they all just started to spin and pile into this mess. 
Oh, Alex Pedro hit Austin Weiner dead in the right side. And Austin Weiner goes for two barrel rolls. And then other cars get into it. Like, there you see Tommy Mooney and Ian Dutta all get in there. Let's go up here to see where does the initial contact really start. Let's see. Oh, it just looked like Austin Weiner just got sandwiched in between Jessica Sheldon and Hunter Bell, and then they just come down in the P.J. Williams, and that's what got everybody all swirly and spinning and getting involved in this. And then up ahead, whenever the uh, the 12 went upside down after Alex Pedro had hit that car that's when some more cars get involved like there you see Brody Talley got a piece of it as long with Sam Young and then right there Ian Dutta comes up in front of Tommy Mooney and that's what happens to the 48 car Henrietta Fitzwater got a piece of that although Hunter Bell yeah right there he got Ian Dutta and that's how he got more damage and then there you see Seth Cole and Danny Wells now. How does Danny Wells get into this? Oh man, it looks like right there he hits the 38, the 38 of Jekko. And then he gets hit from Seth Cole and then up in the Hunter Bell and that's what happens to the 31 car. Let's go up to the 12 of Austin Weiner and let's see because he was up at the front of this wreck. As there you see, he gets sandwiched between the 4 and the 22, and then they all come down into P.J. Williams, and that's what gets everybody going. And then looks like Weiner could have gotten around, but then right there he got hit in the right side by Alex Pedro, and he's going to barrel roll two times but land on his wheels, but no really damage on that front end of the car, and he was able to drive away from that. <clears throat> but unfortunately... He's going to get into an incident. I don't know with who. Let's see. I'm almost starting to wonder if it was Sam Young. Oh, no. He just... What? What, was hap what happened here? I think he lost the... I think the steering went out on his car. I'm not sure what happened. Or his steering wheel locked up. I'm not sure because he his car just went straight into that wall. Nobody was there to hit him. I almost thought Sam Young got into him. But no, let's see this one more time. He's running on the low line in the third gear. And then this car never turns and goes right into the wall. I'm almost as of wondering if the steering wheel got locked up. As he was trying, to, and whenever he was trying to turn the car, it wouldn't turn, and the steering wheel locked up, and that's what happens to the 12, and there was nothing he could do about it. But that is a tough break for Austin Weiner, who won back at Thornton this season, and it came into this race 11th in points with that win to hope to get back into the top 10, but he might free fall a little bit in the point standings as a result, but... We're actually going to go now. We're going to get ready to go to the restart. Take, see you there. Well, the updated list of cars out of the race. We have several out of the race. And they are Ian Dutta, or at least he's probably, he might be on track still. But everybody else, Austin Weiner, Alex Pedro, Seth Cole, Tommy Mooney, Danny Wells, and Jekko Knight are all out of the race after that caution. And we have more cars a lap down, and Joshua Collard is your leader. Second is Matt McIntyre. Third, David Rivera. Fourth, Betty Johnson. Fifth is Trent Dunham. Sixth is Justin Talampas. Seventh is Chase Oliver. Eighth is Annie Thomas. Ninth, Charles Jackson. Tenth is Austin Talley. And the rest of the field is Dylan Thero, Parker Wright, Theo Stegall, Rue McIntyre, P.J. Williams, Cody Lamas, Ryan Anderson Jr., Henrietta Fitzwater, Mason Bromer, and Brody Talley, the top 20. And then the rest of the cars on the lead lap are Chris Washer, Gabe Williams, the points leader, 
Jessica Shelton and Hunter Bell. And then the cars we have a lap or more down, or these are all lap down cars. Dylan Young, Eric Burton, Sam Young, and Ian Dutta. <coughs> At least those are cars. Yeah, they are all one lap down after that uh, caution, but... Here we go. We are getting ready to go green flag racing again with 39 laps to go. So we're nine laps away from halfway here in the Coca-Cola 600. And so far it has been a giant wreck fest. A lot, we have had three big wrecks take place in this race. To the point where I believe we only have 28 cars left on the track and 24 of them are on the lead lap. But Collard manages to pull out to a good lead for the moment. Meanwhile, battle for second between Matt McIntyre and David Rivera. It's three wide. They were going underneath Dylan Young, but Chase Oliver and Betty Johnson racing pretty good right now for that uh, sixth position. And then, whoa, look at this log jam back here. <coughs> they are underneath of Ian Dutta. Oh, he about got into Dylan Thero, and that could have been really bad, but... Ian Dutta is holding holding up a lot of cars. Oh, there's Sam Young up against the wall, and they are four wide, but they keep it together. Sam Young manages to keep his car up against the wall and avoid disaster. Meanwhile... Collard leads, but now this top five has gotten shooken up. Dunham's now up to second, and now we see Talam pass and Chase Oliver all coming up into the fray. It looks like Chase Oliver might get an advantage, but now it looks like Talam pass is going to keep running the bottom. But now Chase Oliver trying to run a bottom line to go underneath of a couple cars. Oh, in the McIntyre, but they save it. Great job for those cars to keep their cars on the track. And they are still running up here. And now, Talam Pass is thinking about going underneath of Collard for the lead. <clears throat> it's like Season 2 of NASCAR World Mark Cup Series has been the season of rookies because we've had quite a bunch of rookies win their first race of the season so far. Austin Talia's won a race. He's actually won two. <clears throat> and he's the only multiple race winner we have this season. Joshua Collard won a race earlier in the season. Hunter Bell won a race as well. We've had several... We've had a few rookies go to victory lane so far this season. Meanwhile, it is now... Oh, I thought they were going to go three wide for the lead. But Talam Pass so far is doing a good job of holding off the field. But now here comes Trent Dunham, who is in survival mode, basically. And he's in concentration mode to try to get his first ever NASCAR Walmart Cup Series victory. After the dismal season he had back in Season 1, this season, so far, he's had a good season. He comes into this race 10th in the point standings. He just has to keep his consistency up and probably get a win so he can be in a safe bet for the chase for the championship. And now he is going underneath of Matt McIntyre for second, and he's trying hard to get underneath of Talampas to get the lead from him, but Talampas just has a strong car up against that high line. Uh-oh, they're getting ready to encounter the lap car of Hunter Bell. Oh, no. This will not end well, and Talampas gets held up. And now Dunham gets the lead. Now Matt McIntyre and Chase Oliver are getting held up after all this. They are still getting held up. Because they've got Betty Johnson Chase Oliver trying to get around the 22. Oh, man. This is no. Okay, they managed to get through them. But Talampas and Matt McIntyre got the worst end of the deal. And now Trent Dunham... At the halfway point, 30 to go. He is your leader, David Rivera, second. Let's actually go through a run-through of the field as they run, shall we? 
since we are, we've had a long green flag run, let's take a look at how the field is running. Trent Dunham is your leader. Second is David Rivera. Third, Joshua Collard. Fourth is Chase Oliver. Fifth, Betty Johnson. Sixth is Matt McIntyre. Seventh is Justin Talampas. Eighth, Rue McIntyre. Ninth, Annie Thomas. Tenth is Parker Wright. Eleventh is Sonny Hammond. Twelfth, Cody Lamas. Thirteenth, Brody Talley. Fourteenth, PJ Williams. Fifteenth, Henrietta Fitzwater. Sixteenth is Charles Jackson. 17th is Ryan Anderson Jr., 18th Mason Bromer, 19th Austin Talley, 20th is Jessica Sheldon, 21st is Chris Washer, 22nd Gabe Williams, 23rd Theo Stegall, and then 24th would be Hunter Bell, I would assume. Yes, Hunter Bell. And then 25th is Dylan Young, 26th. Ian Dutta, 27th, Sam Young. And then 28th is Eric Burden, which they just went past. Let's actually go to the 55 to make sure no funny business happens. Oh, man, they are three wide, about to approach him. Somebody's going to get held up, and it looks like it's going to be uh, Betty Johnson who gets held up this time. Oh, man, they're running very, very close to him, but they keep it together. Looks like they'll be able to get around them, so that's a good thing. So far after that last caution, we've had a very good green flag run after all those cars have wrecked. And when we come to the stripe, it's going to be 25 laps to go, and I see Sam Young's pulled in the pit road trying to go down there to get some damage repaired after that last caution. The margin at the line for Trent Dunham was a half a, excuse me, a half a second over David Rivera for that lead. And these cars have not yet made green flag pit stops. I would say when they do, if they have to pit within these next four or five laps, they might end up having to come down pit road maybe one more time to top off, but it all depends on what's going to happen here on the track if a caution comes out or not. And I see Trent Dunham slowing down. I think he's going to come down, and he is. He is coming down the pit road for green flag stops. Actually, green flag stops have already taken place. There are a lot of cars down there. I see Matt McIntyre, Chase Oliver's in there, Annie Thomas. We got several cars on pit road. And it looks like the first car that got out that is on the lead lap is Mason Bromer. So if Mason Bromer can get around the one car of Trent Dunham, he might be able to get to the lead now. But we'll see how this is going to work out for Mason Bromer in that 11 car. <laughs> It's going to be interesting to see how the field is going to be after this cycle of pit stops. Now, I do think these cars may have to pit one more time in order to continue the rest of the way on gas, but we'll see. But Mason Bromer is getting held up behind Eric Burden, so this could be costly for that 11 car. And they're saying he scored in 13th. Who has scored the leader? Trying to find who they're scoring as the leader. But right now it's hard. They're scoring Justin Talampas as the leader. Now he's scored in second. Well then who the hell has scored the leader? Oh, it's Trent Dunham. So the lead has now cycled back around to the one car of Trent Dunham. So Trent Dunham, after that round of green flag pit stops, he is now going to be still be the leader here. Now this entire field has just been completely shuffled after those pit stops. In fact, Trent Dunham has a, almost a three-second lead over the second-place car. 
which I don't know who it is, but Trent Dunham now approaching the uh, lead the lead lap car of Ryan Anderson Jr., who's running only about two miles per hour slower. It's just Dunham has a much faster car, and now he's going to go underneath of Ryan to put him a lap down, and there are several cars running up ahead of him that must have had slower pit stops and are now running in the back. <coughs> Let's take a look and see how the field is after that round of pit stops. Trent Dunham is your leader. Second is Betty Johnson. Third is going to be Matt, or, uh, Rue McIntyre. Fourth is Dylan Thero. And then fifth is Charles Jackson. Sixth is P.J. Williams. 7th, Mason Bromer. 8th, Justin Talampas. 9th, Austin Talley. 10th is Annie Thomas. 11th is Matt McIntyre. 12th, Brody Talley. 13th is Gabe Williams. 14th is David Rivera. 15th is Chase Oliver. 16th is Chris Washer. 17th is Joshua Collard. 18th is Cody Lamas. 19th, Theo Segal. 20th is Jessica Sheldon. 21st is Henrietta Fitzwater. 22nd is Parker Wright, and then everybody else are lapped down or more, and they are Ian Dutta, Ryan Anderson Jr., Hunter Bell, Sam Young, and uh, Eric Burton, and Dylan Young. So those are the cars who are still lapped down or so, and Trent Dunham see the margin it was at the line there wow nearly three and a half seconds so Trent Dunham has pulled off big time from the rest of the cars on the lead lap he has got a big big lead and all he has to do is just stay out of trouble and have a good pit stop in case they do have to pit one more time so that way he might be able to win, but he'll have to have this race go green the rest of the way because if a caution comes out, then all those cars that he's way ahead of are going to be right up to his bumper, and they're going to be a big challenge for the one car. And it's 15 to go here in the Coca-Cola 600, and we've had a long green flag run going. This is great. see where Betty Johnson is. There she is running second. And then third is Rue McIntyre. And there you see the speeds. They go 200 miles an hour entering turn three. And they exit turn four at 186. So they barely use any brakes. There is Eric Burden who Trent Dunham is about to catch. There you see Burden just now entering turn three, and now here comes Dunham. He is catching that 55 very fast. We'll see if the 55 will have any uh, role in having any cars in second on back. Catch the one car if possible. We'll see as he is almost to the 55. I think I'm confident he's going to get around that 55 car and manage to keep that big lead. And there he is going underneath, so yes, he is going to get through with the 55. Next car ahead for Trent Dunham is Dylan Young, who is just now crossing the start-finish line, and now here comes Dunham for himself. Although Dylan Young is up to speed, so looks like Dunham would have a tougher time trying to get around the two. Because Dylan is up, Dylan Young is up to speed, but although he is a couple miles per hour slower, he's kind of like how Ryan Anderson Jr. is, and Ryan Anderson Jr. has been running steadily right behind the one car, but then again, he's a lap down after those pit stops. But he's been running literally right behind the one car. And we are a lap away from 10 laps to go here in the Coke 600. And Trent Dunham is trying to get his first career NASCAR Walmart Cup Series victory. And now it's 10 to go. Let's see what the margin was whenever they uh, go into the backstretch. We'll see how big his lead is now. 
four over four and a half seconds. Unbelievable. And I think that battle there now we got a three car battle for the second spot between Rue McIntyre, Dylan Thero, and Betty Johnson. All three of them Fords and are a part of Roush Yates Engines companies. So technically they're teammates, but Rue McIntyre is the only car. Or actually, no, the 28 is teammates with the 21 of Chase Oliver for the Wood Brothers Yates team. And then Dylan Thero and Betty Johnson are part of the, are part of the Roush team. So all these cars are technically teammates, but the 28 is part of Yates Wood Brothers. And the 17 and the 99 are a part of Roush, and they are all racing pretty good for the second spot. They are losing ground to the one car because they're racing so hard. And now is Rue McIntyre. Rue McIntyre is making it three wide. He made it. He made a hole and he tried to get through underneath of the 17 and above the 99. Let's see what's going to happen with this. Hopefully they don't wreck. Uh, oh, and there they go. There goes the 99. Oh, but they save it. Great job. Here I thought they were going to wreck, but they save it. But Rue McIntyre is going to be the biggest victim. He hit pretty hard. And now he's losing a lot of spots. And now Charles Jackson is up into the fourth spot. Rue McIntyre has lost a lot of ground as a result of that hit. But let's see if he is still going to be completely up to speed or not. As it is six to go and no it doesn't look like he is up to speed and wait a minute are pit stops taking place yes they're getting ready to happen they're getting ready to make their final pit stop because here comes Trent Dunham the leader to pit road and the other cars are on pit road now Trent Dunham's big lead I think he might still keep it but now he's going to have to deal with the pit stop Let's see what happens with the one car. Is now he's getting bypassed by the 17, but I think the one's going to get around this. And he went with four tires and fuel, so that way he can keep going the rest of the way. And it looks like Trent Dunham is going to be out of the pits first from the cars that just now came down. But who did they score as the leader is what I'm wondering. Who did they have scored as the leader? They have Dylan Thero scored, but he's just now making his pit stop. There you see Trent. He's starting to come up the, to the track as it's less than five to go. So these cars are going to be able to make it since they made their final pit stop of the race. Let's see where Dunham's going to be scored this time. He is back to the lead, so it looks like Dunham, this might be Dunham's race. And if a caution comes out at any moment, the race will be over either way. So all Dunham has to do is avoid trouble, and he's got this win. And there is Dylan Thero up ahead of the one car. And he scored in the 12th spot. So Dylan Thero must have had a very, very slow pit stop. And now he's about to go a lap down to Trent Dunham. And he was running in the second spot at the time. Before the pit stops took place. And whoa, they about got into trouble with Cody Lamas. Who was just now getting back on the track after his pit stop. But they managed to keep it together. Oh, and Dylan Thero goes up into the wall. I apologize for that freeze. I don't know what happened. But anyways, it's two to go for Trent Dunham. Let's see the margin. Wow, a nearly seven-second lead over Char Now a seven-second lead over second place Charles Jackson. And then everybody else are about a half a track behind the one car. And now the white flag is going to be displayed for Trent Dunham, the dominating car of the race. He is trying to get his first win of his career in the NASCAR Walmart Cup Series. Seven and a half seconds 
All he has to do is just not get into any cars, and he's got it. He's got Dylan Thero underneath him. And it looks like Trent Dunham, he is going to win the Coca-Cola 600 at Charlotte Motor Speedway. Great job dominating car. Trent Dunham finally gets his NASCAR and Walmart Cup Series win that has long eluded him ever since this series began. And he finally does it, and what a way to win it than the Coca-Cola 600 at Charlotte. Great job for that one team. And this is going to move him up pretty good and pretty high up in the point standings. Came into the race 10th in the standings. And with a couple cars up ahead of him in the points that had some troubles, he might get up to maybe the 8th, 7th, 6th positions of points. It all depends on where everybody else finished. But then, if, then again, of course, you're going to see the point standings at the end of the video. But now Trent Dunham comes into his pit stall to finish it off. Let's take a look at the official results of this race. Trent Dunham gets his first career NASCAR Walmart Cup Series win here in the Coca-Cola 600 at Charlotte. Great job for that one car. Dominating fashion. Great finish for him. Charles Jackson gets a second place finish. Great run for him. I'm telling you, Jackson, he, it's inevitable for him to win a NASCAR Walmart Cup Series race. He's just not had the luck to get that win, and he finished second. But he was running around the sixth spot by the time it was five to go. And then when the 17, the 99, and the 28 all got into a little incident, he got around them, and also with the pit stops, and got the second spot. Austin Talley, our winner from last week at Lime Rock and our two-time winner of the season, he gets third. Great run for him. Chase Oliver gets a great finish, and he's been needing to get some good finishes in order to get into contention for the chase. And he gets a fourth-place finish. Great run for him. And Annie Thomas gets a great finish of fifth. Mason Bromer got sixth. Great job for that 11 team. Betty Johnson gets another great run of 7th. And then P.J. Williams gets a good finish of 8th. Justin Talampaz gets yet another top 10. And Jessica Sheldon, who was running in the pack of the pack for most of this race, she somehow gets a 10th place finish. Great run for her. And then the last car to finish on the lead lap was points leader Gabe Williams. So I think Gabe Williams is going to still be the points leader going into the next race which uh, I don't remember. I'm actually going to take a look at the schedule right now. Let's see where the next race is being run at. Next race we're running is back to restrictor play racing at M&M's. So that's the next race we're running. And then the rest of the cars that finished the race but were a lap or more down were Dylan Thero, Theo Segal, Brody Talley, Parker Wright, Joshua Collard, Chris Washer, Henrietta Fitzwater, Matt McIntyre, and David Rivera. And then the rest of these cars finished a lap or three down. And they were Ryan Anderson Jr., Dylan Young, Cody Lamas, Rue McIntyre. Tough break for Rue McIntyre. He was running up in that top five. And then he got into that incident with Thero and Johnson and could not stay up to speed after all that, and he gets 24th. Then Ian Dutta, Sam Young, Hunter Bell, and Eric Burden. Those were the cars who finished. Everybody else was out of the race after their respective incidents. Austin Weiner, Alex Pedro, Seth Cole, Tommy Mooney, Danny Wells, Jekko Knight, Barney Taylor, Alex Hawkins, Zachary Fitzwater, Kyle Matthews, Michael Norman, Preston Plord, Sonny Ammon, and Ken Thero. So that is a look at your official results. Next race we are running is the M&M's 500 at M&M's Super Speedway. That should be a crazy race as it is restrictor play racing at its finest. But until then, here is a look at your results, point standings, and rookie and regular. We'll see you at the next race at M&M's.